But one of the moral mazes for any preacher, I think, a Christian preacher in particular, is homosexuality. There is no moral confusion with Jesus Christ concerning homosexuality. And if Jesus Christ is not morally confused, no faithful Christian pastor should be confused concerning sin, concerning homosexuality. Homosexuality is condemned in the Word of God. It's condemned in the human body. So it's wrong to do. Um, what is your view? Because it seems to have changed depending on the interview that I've read or seen. What is your view? Is homosexuality a sin in your eyes? Yes, I've always believed, Pierce, the scripture shows that it's a sin. But, you know, I'm not one of those that are out there to bash homosexuals and tell them that they're terrible people and all that. I mean, there are other sins in the Bible, too. I think sometimes the church, and I don't mean this critically, but we focus on one issue or two issues, and there's plenty of other ones. So I don't believe his uh, homosexuality is God's best for a person's life. I mean, sin means to miss the mark. But I don't believe being prideful or being, you know, liar. Sin does mean to miss the mark. And the consequence for missing the mark, according to Romans 6.23, is eternal damnation. Yeah. You, you don't normally talk about sin. That's the first time I've actually heard you s yeah. spell it out. Well, you know, it's, it's almost it's, like you've come ready for that question and thought, I'm actually going to say this. Well, I'm going to say it's a sin. I think I'm, I'm grown in my, my knowledge. I mean, those first interviews, I mean, this was all new to me. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't go to seminary. I wasn't raised, I was raised in this, but not in, in front of the camera. But I think this point, people say I don't, I don't talk about sin, but I do talk about how we live our life and making good choices. And at the end of every one of our services, I talk about, the, I believe, the greatest sin, and that's to miss the mark of, of not knowing your Creator through so Christ. You, you cannot talk about how to live life unless you also refer to how not to live life. Uh, this interviewer, Piers Morgan, he chose the most popular American pastor, and he chose him because he wanted to pick on his weaknesses. As men of God, we have to rise up and say exactly what God is saying. Agree with God. You must call people to repentance. That is the essence of the ministry of Jesus Christ initially. Turn from your sins and then turn to righteousness. You can't tell people to turn to righteousness unless you tell them to turn from sin. When you see civil partnerships being sanctioned, you think that's wrong? Well, Presumably. yeah, I think, it's, I think it's wrong, but I'm not going to bash those people. I'm not going to be against those people. They're, they're good people. I say it's wrong because that's what the Scripture says. And you know what? I, I choose to live my life by what I, what I read in the Scripture. Whenever someone asks you your opinion or your view on something, and they're asking you that question from the perspective of a man of God, as a man of God, you are representative of of God. You are the representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And since you are his representative, you have to say what he says. And as a matter of fact, if you're a follower of Christ, you have to believe what he believes. You see, I mean, if I had, say, a friend of mine like Elton John, yes, watching this at home, who with his partner, his civil partner, David Furnish, have just uh, had a surrogate child, which was born on Christmas Day, you know, they're going to be pretty angry what they hear. They're going to think, who are you to call them a sinner? Yeah. But why are they sinners in your eyes? See, truth is not based on Elton John. It's not based on uh, being able to buy children. Uh, truth is an objective reality. It's outside of you. We have to ascribe to truth because of the Word of God. We don't allow ourselves to be, to, to be wrapped up into the emotional aspects of reality because then you're, you're going to lose truth. And so it doesn't matter who's sitting in front of you, whether it's Piers Morgan or whether it's Elton John. If you love these people, you have to tell them the word of God concerning them, especially if they're going to hire you, because obviously paying Pastor Osteen, if they're going to hire you to come on and to talk to them. Well, it's stri strictly, strictly back to what the scripture says. I mean, I can't, I can't grab one part and say God wants you to be blessed and live an abundant life and not grab the other part that says, you know what? you know, live, live that kind of life. So I just, you know, it comes back to the scripture. I'm not the judge. You know, God didn't tell me to go around judging everybody. I'm not so sure though, you see. 
if you'll notice throughout this interview, uh, Pastor Osteen never actually references what the scripture says. He just uh, repetitively may state, uh, well, I believe what the scripture says, and the scripture states this, and the scripture states that, but he never actually references any scriptures. It's important to reference scripture because that's what gives life and destroys the devil. Uh, when it comes to uh, God's best, God's best is Jesus Christ. If you live your life contradictory to God, Son Jesus Christ then you're obviously missing the mark and the ultimate result of that again is eternal is eternal damnation the result of receiving Christ his power and spirit is eternal eternal life I think you are a kind of judge and I think you can't abrogate that responsibility I think because of your influence there's seven million eight million viewers every Sunday when you say things like homosexuality is a sin it's a big statement to make you are a judge, and you're encouraging your congregation to well, believe it's that. Not the, it's not the, it's the people that we're after. We're not, we're not looking at their sin. We're not trying to judge their sin. We're trying to encourage them and, and let them to know that what? we love them. And that, you know what, you're only going to reach people by reaching out to them. Yeah, but I'm curious. And, you know, like if Elton John was sitting here to, today, say man, to I'd say, I love you, Elton John. You are talented. Well, I can you tell you, he's so not going to say the gifts. same. <laughs> You have, you know, yeah, but he's not going to so, say to you, I don't like the way you lead your life. And so he has a straw man argument. He keeps bringing up Elton John and, 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 and what Elton John would say. That's irrelevant. It has absolutely nothing to do with the truth. But, of course, he's doing his job, which is to deceive. I just want to let you know that Piers Morgan's job is to deceive you. He's a part of this system. He's a part of the world system. And the, world, the whole world lies in deception and in darkness and in wickedness. And so he's doing his job and it's our job as men of God to rise up and say, sir, you're a liar and your whole system is a liar. That way they won't have you on CNN anymore because they'll know exactly what you're going to say. They won't continuously put you up there as they are uh, past hosting. They, they're not, they're not going to put you up there because they're going to know what you're going to say. Well, I mean, what, what I'm saying is how, I, how we're not judging the person. Yeah. You know, and that's why you say that, you know, he's not saying sin, but it's yeah, like but you we want to judging reach the person, aren't you? If you're walking in sin, you're already judged. Aren't you? Well, to me, I just, I'm not, I'm not the one to judge and say, you know, who's bad and who's good. Otherwise, you'd have to go through everybody, you know, every, every one of us and say, well, you know what, I got some pride or I've got, I, I had an evil thought the other day. Those are sins too. I don't know that God is judging sins on different levels, but we pick out that one. So, I mean, our message, if, I mean, you know, if you listen to my message, they're about lifting people up. And so it's not, I mean, I really talk about the homosexuality when we get on the interview. So if you have gay people that come to your church and you only talk about homosexuality on interviews, that's obviously a problem. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. Because of our ungodliness, humanity is already condemned. And you cannot be a good person and also considered condemned. If you are condemned, that means you are judged as worthy of destruction. And Jesus died to save you from that. And so in that, he is right by saying the greatest sin, according to John 16, is to reject Jesus Christ because he's the only one who can rescue you and me. Yeah, but I'm curious, what, what, what would you say to a homosexual watching this? What do you do? How do they change? What do they have to do to change to be better people? Well, I believe it's a, I don't know that I understand it all. I believe it's a process, but I, I believe that God can give us grace to change. We've seen people break addictions and do other things as well. So. You tell them Jesus loves them and died to rescue them from where their iniquity is taking them. Because they're already condemned, you tell them that they can be free from the condemnation of homosexuality, fornication, adultery, theft, murder, rape, hatred, violence, witchcraft. You tell them that God can break it all through his son Jesus and he's already created a way for you to, 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 to leave the lifestyle of rebellion and to enter into eternal glory with him. You tell them that. Addiction, I mean, look, I don't want to bang on about this, but the, an addiction to alcohol or drugs or something is one thing. You know, being gay, you're gay. There's not much you can do about it. It's not something, I, mean, I don't believe it's something you choose to be. And now he's bringing about what he believes. I don't believe, it's not about belief, it's about truth.
I don't think Elton John woke up one day and went, I think I quite fancy being gay today. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, don't, I don't know. So I don't isn't, know. It, isn't it? It's, it's much harder than just an average addiction. And now, Piers Morgan is going to try to distinguish between sins. He's going to say, oh, addiction is, is one thing, but, you know, homosexuality. You can't change. You can change. Many people I have already illustrated that in their transitions from darkness to light, because it's all coming from darkness to light. Homosexual is a person, and homosexuality is a type of sin that men commit. It's a type of sin. People are sorcerers, fortune tellers. People practice yoga, which is witchcraft. They tattoo their bodies. They listen to foul music. They go to strip clubs. They have sex with people they're not committed to. There are, ma there are many, many sins. And these sins have differing consequences. The ultimate consequence for sin that's not repented of is damnation, death. And that's what Jesus Christ died to save you from. Yeah, I don't, it, it is. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult subject. issue. I, I, don't, I don't understand all the answers. And, but I just come back to the, what I read in the scripture. I can't ignore that. I don't, I'm saying it again. I don't know that I understand it all. You're already judged if you're walking in sin. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not be damned. They should not perish because they're already judged, according to the latter verses after John 3, 16, 17 and 18. He says, he that believes not is already condemned. And so Joel Osteen is to uh, his responsibility, your responsibility, my responsibility, uh, by, by the grace of God is to let people know that, hey, you're already condemned. You, do you want to not be condemned? But I come back to this, we're four people. It's not going to do any good to, you know, bash people and say you're second class or you're this. I'm, I'm not, you know, we have gay people that come to our church and sit there. We have people from different faiths. And so it's an issue that, um, you know, it's a heart issue. And I don't know that I fully understand it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So how does a pastor of over uh, many thousands, many thousands, uh, not understand something so scripturally articulated as sexual perversion and this is what is wrong with the church of Jesus Christ in America not that anything is wrong with the real church but with the uh, the congregations of many I should say and the leadership of many is they're refusing to call people to repentance by the love of Jesus Christ and by the power of Jesus Christ and they are refusing to address the very same things that God brings his wrath on nations do too and so you and I must pray we must ask God to strengthen us and to develop us into the kind of people who will love people preach the word of God to them tell them that they must depart from their sins and that they must enter into the beauty of God's loving joy Jesus said come unto me and Matthew 11 all you who labor those who are working and when he's talking about working he's not talking about being a carpenter or a farmer he's talking about those who are trying to earn the best of life those who are trying to obtain the best of life by their own efforts or by their own will or by their own works that is what Jesus wants to liberate you from he's anointed by his father to liberate the captives and to let them go free it's written in Johnny it says if the son therefore will make you free you're free indeed and so it doesn't matter what your iniquity is it doesn't matter what you is if it's a proud look if it's a lying tongue you might be a liar the Spirit of God can break that you might be an adulterer the Spirit of God can break that you might be you might ma manifest or meditate on evil thoughts it doesn't matter what your iniquity is it can be broken in the name of Jesus in first John chapter 1 it says if we confess our sins no matter what they are if we confess our sins that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and then to cleanse us that is to sanctify us from all unrighteousness but if you say that you don't have any sin then you make him a liar and his word does not abide in you so preach the word of God in season out of season pray for the leaders of this nation especially the religious leaders because ultimately they're going to receive the greater consequence of the things that I don't know my responsibility in that position is to know what God is saying don't rely on your own understanding for uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 say that trust in the Lord with all your heart if you get up there and you don't know what to say then either the Holy Ghost is not talking to you at that point which is a dangerous position to put yourself in if you're not being led by the Spirit 
Spirit to give an answer to every man that asks you for a reason of the hope that's in you, according to Peter's writings. Understand that if you're in that position, the Holy Ghost will speak for you. If you are submissive to the Spirit of God, He will speak for you. And even if you don't have the answers, you know what your main answer should be? John 3, 16. That's your answer. God loves you. Don't die and go to hell. He, he made a way of escape for you. Period. Where else do you have to go from there? Hey, is that iniquity? Yeah, that's iniquity. You're going to hell if you don't stop doing that. Jesus loves you, though, and he wants to deliver you from that. Don't allow the world to take you uh, to hell. They're, they're lying in darkness. Not only are they lying, but they're, they, they, they live, they abide in darkness. Pierce Morgan, he, he is what the rest of the news anchor people are. He is a pawn by the powers of the air. So avoid the powers of the air their message and anybody who refuses to preach the everlasting gospel fear God and keep his word for he's gonna bring everything that you and I do to light